Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I have a fun filled be themed Dollar Tree decor DIY video for you guys. Let's go ahead and get started on our first project. Using a glass canister from Dollar Tree. Now you could spray paint this white. Weather was not permitting in my area that day, so I gave this two coats of white chalk paint. Then I used Apple Barrel's acrylic paint in the color khaki and very carefully with an angled brush went around the center of the jar, giving this two coats, allowing it to dry in between coats. And it gave it an absolutely beautiful, rich, almost honey looking color. Now, since I used chalk paint and this is on glass, I want to protect it. So I'm going to seal that in using a layer of Mod Podge. I went around the entire jar, especially that rim where you're going to take the lid on and off, as well as painted the lid itself. Allow that to thoroughly dry and I created a decal on my Cricut. I have this as a free PDF printable on my website. My website link is in my description box below. You can go over there, download this PDF, print it out, and transfer it onto your project. Before I show you any pictures, we've got to do project number two because it goes perfectly with our first project. You can find a small jar of buttons at Dollar Tree. You're going to lay out one larger one in the middle and then break them down in smaller sizes on each side. And so you'll have a total of seven. I'm going to glue one of the smaller ones in the center of the largest one in the middle. And I'll continue to do that on one side, making the buttons smaller as I go up to the top. Then I'll flip that over, repeat the process on the other side, starting with the next size smaller button and then working my way up into the smallest button. Then I took a piece of sandpaper to go around and remove any of the hot glue strands. And I'm also using a wooden dowel. I cut that down and sanded it to make sure it was nice and flat on the end. And I am applying a base coat of white chalk paint because I want this to match my dowel. So again, I'm gonna use that Apple Barrel acrylic khaki color paint the honey dipper end, and then I'm going to glue the dowel right to the center of one side of this beautiful little honey dipper. Now this is absolutely adorable. I know you can buy these, but if you've already got some buttons on hand, you can create one for very little money. Now we're going to create some honey. So I'm just going to take my hot glue gun, create a couple of puddles and a couple of drippings and I have this sitting on wax paper you'll let it completely cool down you can make as many as you like I just created some extras just in case now I originally went over this with some antique gold it did not want to stick to my hot glue so I did have to put a base coat of white chalk paint so that it would stay when I applied the antique gold on top of the white chalk paint. Then it gave it a beautiful, rich color, and they were able to keep the color to stay on the hot glue. Then I took some of those drippings and kind of glued them on top of each other overlapping so it would look like honey running down. I glued that onto the dipper, and then I can set this on top of those little puddles to make it look like the dipper has honey dripping off of it, and this is absolutely adorable. I love how these two projects came out, and I really hope you guys like it too. If you have a Cricut, I used the font Claude Sands Standard Regular. For project number three, now this did not come from Dollar Tree because I could not find a pot holder with a B theme on it, but I did find this at Dollar General for $1. I removed the tags and then carefully removed the thread holding the loop together and then removed the thread on a little bit of each side of the loop to create an opening at the top of the pot holder. Then you're able to pull the border pieces apart and we're going to open it up and we're going to put polyfill in this to create a mini pillow. You want to put your polyfill right underneath the first layer of the pot holder where the picture is on top of the foam that's already in there. When I create pillows like this, I like to make sure I stuff the outside edges and the corners first and then work my way to the middle. Once I have it filled enough, I'm going to close that top up by using small sections at a time. I'll pull it tightly 
add a little bit of hot glue or fabric hot glue and hold that together until the glue cools and sets and do that across the top. Then we can add our border back on and I am going to apply the glue on one side at a time. So I'll go right underneath that border, apply the glue, press it down nice and firm and repeat that on the back side as well. For the other side, because we have some additional border because I had a loop, I'm going to cut that down and I cut it at an angle so that I would be able to glue this down and blend it in with the first border that we glued down. You'll glue it down the same way on the front and the back. This is absolutely adorable and just think of how many cute mini pillows that you can create using pot holders and it looks good by itself on a tear tray or even sitting on a candlestick from Dollar Tree. For project number four, we're using this hexagon sign from Dollar Tree. Sometimes it is easier to remove the tags or stickers from the back if you heat it up a little bit with your hair dryer to loosen that glue. Then I'll take some sandpaper and remove all of the excess glue. Wipe that down and I'm going to give this a base coat of white chalk paint to cover it up because we're going to be adding something to the top of this. Now once it's dry, I have created this beautiful free printable again on my website. The link's in my description box below if you'd like to print this out and recreate this project. I'm going to cut it down leaving some excess on the outside so I can center this up on the sign. Once I know exactly where it's gonna go, I can hold it down on one side, lift the other side up, and apply a nice even coat of Mod Podge. Really make sure you get those outside edges. Then I'm gonna take a plaid rolling tool to press that down nice and smooth and make sure all the glue has dispersed and everything's even. Then I can lift the other side up, make sure you get the center seam really well as well as those outside edges. Then you can roll that down as well. Then I went around it and kind of pushed the edges down a little bit with my finger to make sure everything was gonna seal. Once that dried, I went around just the edging itself with the Mod Podge because I wanna make sure the paper doesn't tear. And because I use just a regular printer, I don't wanna go over top of my image with the Mod Podge because it'll make the ink bleed. Once that dried, I took a piece of fine grit sandpaper and went around the edging in one direction to remove all of the excess paper on the edges. Once you have that done, it is finished. This is so pretty. I love the way it looks just by itself, but again, you can add this to a tear tray or also set it on top of a stand or a candlestick and look how beautiful it looks with our previous projects. If you haven't done so already, I would love for you to click that subscribe button right below this video on the right hand side of your screen and also visit me on all my other social media accounts. All those links are in my description box below. Okay, you guys, let's get started on project number five. Using one of Dollar Tree's frames, I'm going to remove that backing and then use my staple remover, or you could use anything with a flat edge to remove that cardboard from the top. Sand it down because I need a smooth surface. I have created another beautiful free printable for you guys that's on my website, the link in my description box below. I'm going to trace this out as well as an additional piece of copy paper because I didn't have any poster board and I want to make sure you don't see the backing through the picture itself. I'll cut those two down to size and then I'm going to take some black chalk paint and paint this entire frame with one good coat. Once that's dry, you can insert your image and your backing and this was such a very simple project but I love how it turned out it looks great by itself and also if you want to use more of the pops of color in your decor rather than just the B this is a good offset and because this is B themed we have to create a gorgeous beehive using one of Dollar Tree's plastic plant containers I believe you can get three of these for $1.25 as well as one and a half of their nautical rope. I'm going to hot glue this around the top part of the planner which is now going to become the bottom part of our beehive. 
when I get all the way around to where I started from, I make sure that I glue it as close as possible so that it doesn't have a wave so much in the back. You're trying to keep your rope as even as possible all the way around. I'm gonna continue this until I get to the end or close to the end of that particular piece of nautical rope. I wanna make sure that my seam stays on the back. So I cut that at an angle where the seam is on the back. I'll start my next piece by cutting it at an angle so that they can be glued together and it'll give it a nice seamless look. See, you can barely tell where which one ends and the next one begins. So I'll continue to do this until I get to the top, but before I get all the way to the top, I'm gonna to take that extra piece of rope with, that we just cut off and I'm going to glue the ends together, cut that tape off of the other end, and we're gonna create a loop at the top of our beehive. Just hold that in place until your hot glue cools and the loop will stand on its own, and then continue to glue around until you get to the top. Now, once you get to the top where the loop is, you'll place some glue underneath the loop and then feed your rope through that, push it down till the glue sets, and then you can repeat that on the other side by gluing that little section down, pulling your rope through and pressing that down. Then you can cut your excess rope off. Make sure you glue those end pieces together so they don't fray and come apart and then tuck that down into the top part underneath the loop. Using a black Sharpie on the opposite side of where we started our seam, because I want the seam to be on the back, I drew a circle and then painted that in with some black chalk paint. Then took some of that extra rope to glue around for the opening of our beehive. Again, when you get to the end, cut it at an angle so you can glue those two pieces together and it will be seamless. I wanted to create a bow, so I'm using some white grow grain ribbon as well as some yellow sheer ribbon from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna cut three strands of each. I didn't measure it. Um, I just cut a little bit longer than I knew I needed so I could trim it down. And I'm gonna alternate those in colors and crisscross those and then I will squeeze that tightly with some floral wire and twist it and then I can attach this to one side of the loop using that floral wire, twisting it pretty tightly. Then you can cut the excess off and make sure that you take some pliers to twist it around and tuck it down so you don't poke yourself with that floral wire. Then I'll cut each one of those tails and trim those down at an angle and I wanted to use some pretty white flowers. So I'm going to use some of Dollar Tree's flowers and cut those off right underneath where the flower petals are and attach a few at the top in the middle of the ribbon as well as around the beehive opening. Now I did wanna create a few loops. So what I did was I took one of the white and one of the yellow at the top and just created a loop and hot glued that underneath. I thought that made the bow look better. I love how this beehive turned out and I hope you guys like it too. And I love those beautiful pops of yellow and white. Our next project, we're using one of these signs from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna remove the hanger and fill those holes in with wood filler and then sand down the glitter to a nice smooth surface as well as the holes that I filled in with wood filler. Once I clean all that up, I was so excited to find this faux black leather in the Crafter Square section at Dollar Tree. This measures about 11 and 3 quarters of an inch by 20 inches. I laid that out to the inside of the frame and used my utility knife to trim it down. And I'm going to attach this using Mod Podge. And just like we did in our previous project, I will do this one side at a time. Now, if I could recreate this project over, I would leave it with just the black leather. And I'll show you why in just a little bit because it did not quite come out the way I imagined in my head. But while that's drying, I'm going to use one of these metal garden stakes from Dollar Tree. And the stake itself is pretty easy to remove. I had my pliers, but you really don't need that. If you hold the, the bottom of the bee down and just wiggle that stake back and forth, it will pop off really easily. Now the front side has these beautiful designs on it. I am gonna give this one coat of black chalk paint, allow it to thoroughly dry, 
and then I am dry brushing white chalk paint very lightly over it, it's going to bring out all those gorgeous designs that are on this metal piece. Then I decided that I would go ahead and go over the frame over the leather to kind of hopefully create the same thing. I wanted the white paint to go down in the indentions of the leather and it didn't quite turn out the way I envisioned in my mind. You could see a lot of the brush strokes and a lot of the streaks, but I kept working with it and I would take some paper towel and try to wipe some of the excess off and then I decided to go ahead and dry brush the frame. But if I had to do over, I would just leave the leather black and then dry brush around the frame itself and the actual metal B. I think that might look better. Once that dries, I'm also going to um, dry brush around three of the tumbling tower pieces, just the outside edges. I'm going to attach these to the back of the B with hot glue to give it some height and depth and dimension on this piece. So I just added one to each wing and one in the center at the bottom, and I glued this down to the middle of the frame. It still turned out kind of cute. Um, again, not quite what I envisioned, but you guys will have to let me know in the comments down below if you think this looks good or would it look better with just the black leather. For this project, we're using two black women's size ankle socks. Take one and set it down inside of one of Dollar Tree's glasses, tuck it in, and then fill that up to your desired height with just regular rice. You can always shape this and manipulate it once you take it out of the glass. I did not have a rubber band, so I used a regular hair tie and tie that around the top to keep any of that rice from coming out. But I do recommend you use something a little bit tighter like a rubber band. Then depending on how much rice you added, you'll cut the excess off and leave a little bit at the top above the hair tie. And then using one of Dollar Tree's microfiber dusting mops, I'm just gonna trim that outside edge fur piece off and that's gonna be the perfect fit to create the beard for our gnome. So I folded it up like it was in half, almost like a U shape, but hold the center together. And then I can wrap that around the back part of the top portion that we left where we tied that sock off. Hot glue that in the back and then hot glue the front part down, especially there where the two pieces meet so it doesn't come apart, but it has a lot of these furry strands on there. So it's very forgiving and you can blend it in really well and you will not see that seam. Once you fluff it out a bit, it should look something like this. So it's gonna come down more in the front and then at an angle go up towards the back and wrapped around. Now we'll take that other sock, which I wish I could have found a striped black and yellow sock, but I couldn't, so I'm just using two regular black socks. You're gonna stretch that out and take the toe portion and just tie a knot in the end. Then you'll place the heel portion on the back part of your gnome down towards the bottom and then leave the front portion up where you'll be able to place the nose. I'm using a wooden bead that I already had on hand. I get mine in a large assorted bag from Amazon, which I have that linked in my Amazon store in my description box below if you're interested. Once I determine exactly where I want to place that, I'm gonna hot glue it, hold it in place, and then pull the sock down about halfway of the bead glue that down on the top and the sides of the nose to make sure it stays in place, and then glue the back of the sock to the bottom of the gnome head just to hold that in place. So I wanted my stocking cap to just fold over in the front. Now I'm gonna take one of the medium size Dollar Tree styrofoam eggs. I cut that in half and then I'm gonna cut the front tip off, so about a quarter of the front for both of those. These are the eggs that measure about two and a half inches long. Then I'm using some black 
fabric. This came from Dollar Tree in their craft or square section. And I wanna create it long enough to wrap around the two larger end pieces of those styrofoam eggs. So I cut two pieces down. They measure about 10 inches long and about five inches wide, roughly. I'm gonna glue the two ends the long way together. So I'm just gonna run a bead of glue down, fold it over, hold it in place, and let that glue cool. And I'll do that for the other piece. And then once the glue is completely cooled, I can turn these inside out and it's gonna look like a sewn seam. So now you'll have two 10 inch long fabric tubes. You wanna make sure that those egg pieces, the larger ones, do fit down inside the ends, and you'll see why in just a minute. I'm using some folk art acrylic paint in the color Moon Yellow, which is more of a orangish yellow, and I gave that two coats all the way around. Now you'll want to slide those larger pieces of the egg into the end of the tube, and then carefully glue those down you wanna make sure your glue gun's on the low setting because if you hold it there too long, obviously it's gonna melt that styrofoam. Then I cut about four inches off of each one so that I can attach the smaller egg pieces to the four inch pieces. These are gonna become the arms and the longer pieces will be the legs. So it should look something like that. Now I'm not gonna add any polyfill to the arms, just to the legs to give them a little bit of volume. And I'm not adding a whole lot at all. I'm gonna push that in with just the end of a paintbrush and roll it around, but I don't want any at the bottom where the styrofoam is because I want it to look flat when I fold it up so that it can have dangly legs. And you'll see in just a minute what I mean. I'm gonna glue the two corners down to create somewhat like a triangle. And then I'm going to attach this to the bottom of the gnome's head. And you can just attach them however you want the legs to sit. See, I want them to fold under so it looks like the yellow part is his shoes and the pant legs extend down beyond the shoes. I did cut a couple more inches off of the arms and determined exactly where I wanted to place those on each side. And then I hot glued that under the stocking cap Make sure you have the rounded part of the egg facing outward so it looks like a mitten. So he should be looking something like this. Now I created a fold over bow using some Dollar Tree sheer yellow ribbon where you just fold it over and cut slits in the center and then wrap a piece of floral wire around that and then fluff your bow out. And then I attach that to the end of the stocking cap with the floral wire, make sure you cut and tuck that excess wire so you don't hurt yourself. And I'm gonna sit him right on top of one of Dollar Tree's small terracotta pots. And I think he turned out adorable. I think he would have been even cuter if I had a striped sock, but either way, I think he turned out gorgeous and he looks great on a tear tray. So if you guys have a favorite out of today's video, I would love to know which one is your favorite. Please let me know in the comments section down below. Thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate each and every one of you. Please take care and I'll see you next time.